Around seven months ago, I got to play Ghost Recon Wildlands at E3, and I was able to share some footage with you guys of the PC build of the game. Back then though, it was very much a work in progress alpha build, and a lot of stuff was still being implemented and worked on. Thankfully though, recently, I was able to play the game again, but this time on PlayStation 4, and that's exactly what you're seeing in the footage now. I played through a little bit of the single player as well, but mostly co-op, and I have to say that the game has come a long way since I first played it, and well, you would expect that really, considering that it releases in March. And this game is definitely more fun when you play it in co-op. So what's Wildlands all about then? Well, this game is an open world modern military shooter set in Bolivia. In fact, it's Ubisoft's largest open world adventure. And let me tell you, it really is pretty huge. During our playtest, we got to play in two regions of the map, Itakua for single player and Montiuk for co-op, but in total there are 21 different regions of varying size and ecosystems, for example some areas may be based in the desert, others in the jungle, and not to forget the snowy epic mountains. Essentially you've got this huge play area with a different feel and different visuals, but my only worry is how much of this huge map has interesting play areas and how much of it is just barren open wasteland. I think nowadays in gaming it's pretty easy to have a gigantic play area and then you can say that you have that but if it's just full of thin air then it isn't quite as appealing there's got to be enough detail in there i'm not saying that this game is going to be like that though from my limited time with it i encountered different plants locales even some flamingos on a lake so i was kept interested and entertained but there are another 20 odd locations to fill so hopefully they're all going to be filled with interesting stuff so the goal of the game is to take down the leader of the Santa Blanca cartel, El Sueno. He's the heavily tattooed guy who looks like someone that you don't want to mess with, but someone's got to do it. He's got four cartel bosses who head up four different divisions, smuggling, drug production, security and influence. In fact, during the game, you'll take down a number of boss characters for each region that you play, and that's around 26 bosses in total. Now of course, if you've got this huge playable area, you need a way to get around it, and the game offers you plenty of choice there. 60 vehicles in fact, ranging from helicopters, Humvees, APCs, motorbikes, even civilian vehicles. There's a lot to choose from to get from point A to point B, and you're really going to need to use those vehicles. Thankfully, you can fast travel to certain locations if you want to save yourself some time, and when in co-op, you can fast travel to teammates as well if you die or they're going to start a mission and you want to join up with them quickly. Now while we're on the topic of co-op, I honestly think, like I said, that this is very much a co-op game at heart. You can play it in single player. If you do, you're going to get three AI teammates that you can control via a radial menu. But I didn't really feel like they came in that useful a lot of the time, and I found myself just going about things on my own, even though I had AI teammates. That could have been because I was new to the game though and didn't fully understand all of the systems in place there. But with that said, when I was playing co-op, it was just way more fun and engaging. And well, we goofed around a lot, and in a way, that's a good thing, because when you play a game for the first time, and you're spending so much time doing silly stuff, you almost forget how long you've been playing for. This game certainly has those moments where you can just relax for a bit and have a bit of fun. One good feature though if you're playing with AI is something called sync shot. Let's say you're pushing a camp and you spot three enemies by a car, maybe even four. You spot them all with your goggles and assuming that you've got it available, you can mark three enemies for a sync shot. Make sure that your AI teammates are in position and when you take your shot, say on the fourth guy, they will take out the marked enemies at the same time. So you can either just mark a few enemies and let the AI deal with them both, or you can mark some and take a shot for yourself and they will take out the ones that you marked. It does help taking down groups of enemies, but of course, it's not as fun as coordinating that with three friends over voice comms. Now I feel like the essence of this game is total freedom. The developers want you to be able to play the game as you want, and you can really. You can go in hot, or you can go in stealthy, you can use your gadgets. We had a drone, for example, that could be used as a scout to scope out areas, and of course, remember to equip your silencers. We weren't playing on a particularly hard difficulty level, but as you progress through the game and you start getting harder opponents and also camps that utilise stuff like drone blockers and other items that make your life harder, going in quietly 
is probably the best way to go. The military faction in the game who are working with the cartel often do patrols in both vehicles and in helicopters so you've got to be extra careful and remember that this is an open world game so anything can spot you from a road or from the air at any time. Keep on your toes. What I found pretty cool though is that the game has a dynamic weather system and this can often work to your advantage. Say for instance it gets foggy then you're going to be much harder if not impossible to be seen by enemies from the air. As well as that, you can use night time to your advantage and that's very important. Guards may be fewer at night time or even sleeping and you can equip both night vision and infrared goggles when you unlock them to make your life much easier. There was also a good level of customization here in my opinion. We were able to fully customize our player character from choosing their sex, their face, hair, clothing, tattoos, even down to what headset they're wearing and the color of their shoes. You can't mold your face into a specific shape though so don't go in expecting to do that but you do have a really good selection of things that you can customise to ensure that your character looks unique. You can also change your clothing later on as well if you unlock a new piece that you like. As well as your character, your weapon can also be customised. Players familiar with some of the latest Ghost Recon games like say Future Soldier will be aware of the gunsmith and in Wildlands this has been built upon. You can change pretty much everything with your weapon via an in-game menu. Change the stock, the barrel, put on a silencer, a long range scope, red dot sight, under barrel, all the things that you would assume you can change, you probably can. You will also want to pay close attention to the skill tree in the game as this will give your character certain abilities. Some skills give you weapon variants like say a grenade launcher, others give you more range on your drone and some are also team play related like being able to revive teammates faster. Having a good blend of abilities between squad mates could be helpful in taking out the harder opponents later in the game. Finding intel on missions and out in the world will also help to unlock new abilities and skills for your character. Overall, with the limited time I spent playing the game again, I did have fun with Wildlands, but I do have some concerns as well. I mentioned one of them earlier, the map size and how much of it is actually going to be interesting gameplay. But one of my other main concerns is variety. How much variety is there going to be in the missions? And is it going to get very samey very fast? We spent a lot of time messing about, doing things like jumping off cliffs, having digger battles, blowing stuff up, and we had a ton of fun with that. But is this game going to make me want to come back to it after a playthrough, or is it going to be something that I will play through once with my friends and then never again? I hope there's some replayability in all of the missions, because unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, there isn't any PvP mode in the game. I can't really answer those questions yet, but from my recent gameplay session and the time I had with the game seven months ago, I can say that a lot of the missions were very similar and involved attacking a camp and killing enemies, usually a boss or interrogating them if need be. But I really hope that there are some interesting mechanics and different mission types that will keep the game fresh. There was some variety with the side missions for instance which was cool where we had to take down a convoy at some point so I hope that that kind of thing carries across to the main story. So that's all for today folks, I hope you enjoyed this early look at Ghost Recon Wildlands. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. As always thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.